All right, right on folks, John Crane here, and this is part two of a multi-part series that I'm doing on the install of this shower. Now in part one, I showed putting down the Dietrich Heat uncoupling membrane throughout the shower floor, the bench, the bathroom floor. So in part two today, I'm gonna show you how I install that Dietrich Heat heated cable throughout the floor, all in this shower. So I'm also gonna show you how to run those thermostat sensors out into the floor and how to hook up the Schluter touchscreen thermostat. All right, I'm gonna put all these videos in a playlist so they are easy to follow along with. All right, let's rock and roll and get busy here. All right, right on folks, I'm getting ready to install the Dietra Heat heating cable in the bathroom. Now I'm going to put this in the bathroom floor, also the shower floor and the shower bench. Now this is a great addition to the bathroom. One of the big perks I think about this is that after you've taken a shower and it's wet in there, you can actually keep this on and it will help to evaporate any water that is on the tile or even that has seeped through the grout. We know that that is gonna happen at some point that water seeps through. That's why we have all the waterproofing, right? So this is a great addition. This is gonna help eliminate any kind of mold or mildew, that type of thing that can start to happen in your shower. All right, so I have two runs of this that I'm going to put in. Now these are both 21.3 square feet each. These cable runs 70 feet in length. I think that's what 70.5 feet in length. And so I just want to give you a rundown of how this gets installed. There's some tests that we have to perform. So I'll show you here what's in the box and the tests that we have to do. All right. So when we open up the box, we got a few things in here. We got some literature. I've already gone through some of this. This is the thermostat sensor that needs to be run in there. This is the instruction manual. And then here is a little sheet that we have to record some readings on there before we install it. So here is the heating cable itself. And you can see here is this black portion. This is the portion that runs into the wall. And then the gray cable is what gets run in the floor. Now they give you a, a little card here and this shows uh, the resistance, the ohm reading that they took at the factory. So if we look right here, we got a resistance of 56.9 ohms. So we wanna check this with an ohm meter and make sure we're in within 10% of their reading that they got at the factory. All right, I got a couple meters here to check the ohms. This is a fluke meter. So I will turn this to the ohm symbol and we'll get a digital readout here. We also get an audible tone if we hold those together. So now I'm gonna come down to the wire and I just wanna hold this against the two wires and check our reading. All right, so right here I am getting 57.657. Yeah, 57.6 is the reading I'm getting right there. I just like to have some fun and test it with the other meter here. And let's see what we get on this one, just to double check. 57.6, 57.7, so we're right in there. All right, so now I will record on the chart here before installation, 57.6, right? 56.9, so we're well within the 10%. So they want you to check this cable three different times, before installation, after cable installation, and after tile installation. And since I'm running two sets of cables, I wrote the number right here, 57.6, next to our 56.9. Just easy reference when this gets pulled up the wall and this is in the box, I can you know quickly differentiate which cable is which. All right, another test they want you to do is check continuity. If there is continuity between the ground and either of these two cables. So we'll hold that there, touch it to here, touch it to here. 
There is no continuity, so we're safe, we're good. Now, if there was continuity between the ground and one of those cables, that means the cable is broken, it's cracked somewhere, the wires are rubbing together, and it's not going to work. Just want to show you real quick, this is the thermostat I'm going to use. It's a touchscreen thermostat made by Schluter Dietra Heat. If we pop this out of the box, it has a, a little sticker here. Here's the touchscreen underneath pop that out. Here's the connections. It also comes with its own thermometer sensor as well. And there you can run two into the floor and then that way you have an extra one in case one breaks down the road. All right, so now what I've got here is I have a pole wire that I already put in the wall. And this is a pole wire that goes up to this box here where the thermostat is gonna be. So I'm gonna take my two runs and I'm gonna tape them all together with the two thermostat wires. I'm gonna run two thermostat wires and two sets of the heating cables up. So I'm just gonna tape this together. And a good trick here is take the ground and let that run a little bit long. All right, here's a closer look at the wire, all taped up and ready to go. So up the mouse hole and up and come right out of this box where I got the pull wire. All right, let's cross our fingers. And hopefully everything goes nice and smooth. That's great, that went nice and smooth. All right, now that I got that coming out of the wall, what I wanna do is eventually I'm gonna cut out a little area here of the heat mat, of the uncoupling membrane. See, this is kind of thick and I'm gonna be able to set that down inside here and actually set it with a hot glue gun. But for now, I just wanna start running the wire because sometimes you start running this wire and you need to change your pattern. So before I dedicate that to that spot, I'm gonna run this and you see this just snaps into this grid and you can take a float here, right? See that? And just push it right in to the mat that lays that nice and flat. And then we put some thin set right over the top. Now this uncoupling membrane, it's not like it's an, the thin set adheres to it like an adhesive. It's a mechanical bond where the thin set goes in here. It gets trapped around these knobs and then adheres to the underside of the tile. And that separates the tile from the subfloor. This is such a great thing to have. Keep your tile from cracking, from splitting. And if you get this Dietra heat mat, you can run the heating cable, which is a huge plus. I'm gonna roll out some of this cable. Now this cable here is gonna run into the shower. So I, I wanna run this down the perimeter. And then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna come up and go over this curb. And I'm gonna slice this curb out with a knife and then use a hot glue gun to glue the wire into place right along the top of our curb. All right, so right here across our curb, I'm gonna cut a little dado right along these three edges. Check out this new knife I got. This is the Knipex, 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 whatever you wanna call it, All right? But pretty cool, look, this extends out and then it has, look, you can extend this out and then you can extend this See that? That puts like a back, almost like a back saw. That's pretty cool. You know, you need that extra length in the knife, which I don't need right now. All right, so I'm gonna cut. Just peel out this little V-notch. And just run this, look at that. Very nicely, right? Up and over. I wanna make sure all these little bends and these corners here 
are nice and smooth. You don't want any kinks in the corners. You want some nice smooth transitions up and down. Now we're gonna take this and go up into the bench. Okay, even right here at the top of the bench on the corner, I've recessed this. I cut a little V notch just to make this a nice easy bend. All right. And then I'll snap this in. And what we want to do is have three lug spacing is what Schluter recommends. So one, two, three. So we'll go around here, around the corner. And with the rubber float. And now we got three lug spacing. We'll do another three lugs. We'll make the transition on the corner and then come back just like that. And then we're gonna carry this kind of pattern throughout the whole floor. Now you notice I didn't do any right here. This is where the shower glass is gonna set and there might be some screws going down through here and into here. So I don't want any wires where I'm potentially gonna put some screws to hold the shower glass. Now I guess Schluter has uh, said that you can do three, two alternate spacing. I heard that on one of Isaac's uh, tile coach videos. He was saying that. Uh, I think I bought this a couple years ago, so I didn't see that in the literature that I have. the curb right here. I just got a little bit, but uh, also I heard on Isaac's channel that he was saying that you do not want to terminate this end in the shower, but rather out in the floor. So that's what I am going to do. So now I'm just going to do the same little V notch right here and I will hot glue this in. Boy, this is such a nice knife here. saying right what's with the weird funny pattern but I made a channel right up here and right here and this is so I can run the temperature probe wires so I'm gonna put one you want to put one out in the field in the middle of the floor and you don't want to put any in the shower because the shower is going to get heated up from the hot water it's going to give you a false reading and it's going to wreak havoc with the thermostat. So what we want to do is we want to put one out here in the middle of the floor and give a little back and forth right here on the wire. And now we can run this wire just kind of straight. This helps if you go back and forth like this, just for it staying in these little lugs, All right? And then this one, we're just going to run this one all the way back. And I'll pull this excess thermostat wire up into the wall. All right, so there's one. And then a second probe. I'm gonna put the second probe right out here in the middle of the field. So we're gonna do the same little routine here. Run this out, just lock this in. 
and we got plenty of room right down this channel here to run our temperature probe. And now I will pull these, pull the excess out. Okay, now I wanna lay these into our Dietrich heat mat, coupling membrane. And I just wanna trace this onto the floor and know where I wanna cut out some of these lugs. So it looks like right about there. And then looks like I wanna cut some of this out too. And this, you know, you almost wanna pull these out of the way pull this out of the way and then slice in here but be very you know you want to pull these out of the way because the one slice into that wire and uh, you know the whole plan is cooked our thin set is doing a really nice job holding down our membrane all right, there we go. That looks great. All right, now that those are in place, now we come in with our, our hot glue gun. Just like that. Even these little thermostat wires, just a little dab on the wires. These little probes out here in the field, just a little tiny dab of the hot glue, just here and there. Don't hit the wire with the tip of the gun, just the glue. All right, now it's time to glue our guys here on the curb. So I'm just gonna lay some glue down. Okay, now I'm jumping ahead in this series. Uh, all the tile is in, but I just wanted to show you that I'm about to put the thermostat in, and now I'm gonna check the ohms again. So this one here, 57.6, so I got the ohm meter set up. 57.2, 57.1, right? We're right in the ballpark there. All right, let's check the other one. Let's see what this one says. 56.2. 56.2. All right, so we're right on the money. That's great. That means no wires were damaged while I was doing the thin set and putting the tile in. Everything's intact in the heating system should work just fine. Okay, the wiring for hooking up the thermostat. Here's our power coming in. Now this is a 120 volt line. So here's our neutral and here's our hot. Here's our ground. So I've tied the ground to the two grounds that go off to the heating cable. So now I will tuck that ground into the back. You can see also I have the thermostat cable coming into the box. Here is that secondary thermostat cable. I just have that one taped up for emergency use if that's ever needed. So that one's going to the back of the box, but here's our other thermostat cable. So now we've got our two load side wires that will go out to our heaters in the floor. Here's our line side. Now I'll get the thermostat. Okay, here's the thermostat that I have brand new out of the box. I'll pull this protective cover off of the screen. And if you look here on the back side of the thermostat is a little protective cover. All right, so on the back of our thermostat, we have line and we have load. So the line side, this will take our 120 volts coming in from the breaker box. Now this thermostat says 12240. I'm using 120 volt uh, power for this particular system. Yours might be different. Uh, here is the load side. So the heater, these heater wires will get connected 
to those two terminals. And there is a little screw right here on the bottom. You need a small Phillips head and you loosen that up. That pops off the front cover. And this right here is where the thermostat gets connected to these terminals here. So we got A, A, C, and D. So C and D, you can see right there, it says sensor. That's where we will put our thermostat wires. Here's a look on the back side of the thermostat after it's been wired up. So here we have our line. So it should look like this before you stuff it into the box. All right, here's the thermostat. Before we put the cover plate on, we have our thermostat wire coming up to sensor C and D. And so now we'll put the cover plate on. This is good to do this with a jeweler's screwdriver. It's a small Phillips head. Also for those sensor wires to tighten those down, a small jeweler's screwdriver is the way to go. All right, now I'll turn the power on. Okay, now I'll take a moment and I'll go through the setup menu. So English. It's going through a system test. It's saying that everything passes here. Thermostat, air room sensor, floor sensor, everything passes. Press the button on the top of the thermostat, the red light will turn on. GFCI is functioning properly. We want it in Fahrenheit. All right, here it's asking for the floor load. So we know we have 270 watts per run. So that's 540, so five or 0.54 kilowatts. So we put this up to 0.5. Default sensor type, I'll set the date, the time. Right here, floor protection tile, 104 degrees. Then we'll click check, and now it will start heating the floor. All right, if we look at the thermostat, it says that our floor is at 58 degrees. Right now it's set to 80, I'll put it at 75. All right, here's one more good look at the floor before we cover this all up with Thinset. All the cable looks real nice, ready to roll. All right, right on folks, that's it for part two. Be sure to join me in part three when I show how I put on the Curdy waterproof membrane. I show how I do the layering system. And then I also get into putting on the Laticrete Hydroban liquid membrane that I roll on top of all of this curdy. I want to make this nice and waterproof. So follow along. There's not a lot of people doing it like this to make it watertight. We know these systems leak. This is the solution that I have come up with. All right, I will put these all into a playlist so they're easy to follow along with. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, all right, hope you guys are well. I'll see y'all soon, right on. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your pals, all that good stuff. All right, see y'all soon, right on.